Alright, welcome to Gateway 2 of Health and Disease. This is a SEC 4 core geography, um, chapter 3, Health and Diseases. We're going to cover Gateway 2, part 1 in this video here. Um, Gateway 2 has been split into two parts because it is quite an extensive an area, so hopefully this will help you. Just a gentle reminder, this set of notes is uh, to provide some explanation and clarification. Uh, you will need to refer to your own textbook as well as the notes that your teachers give you because uh, the set of notes here, actually there's very little content written on it. There's a lot of it, it's verbal explanations, it's diagrams so that uh, you can just listen through and hopefully gain a better understanding of it. Now in essence, Gateway 2 actually revolves around two diseases okay, and how the, these two diseases spread and what kind of impact they cause. Okay, both are infectious diseases, one of which is malaria and the other one is HIV. So the entire gateway 2 revolves around the, the silly little mosquito up there as well as uh, HIV which is basically how human to human infection takes place and what are some of the impacts of this disease. Now before we begin on gateway 2, I want to remind everybody of our human geography topics okay the underlying influence is money right so please remember everything that you argue for everything you read it has to make money sense okay um it, the impacts on humanity largely revolve around how much money somebody is going to make out of this entire incident okay influences of money underlie all the human geography topics now uh, let us start by looking at the major disease outbreaks in the past in human history. Um, we've had struggles with uh, major disease outbreaks in, throughout human history. Um, but the problem with us humans is we don't, after a while, right, we tend to forget what lessons history bring for us and then we continue to plow on. So if you look at page 201, there's a diagram in your textbook that is the same diagram I've extracted out here. Uh, it actually ends at 2009. Uh, interestingly, if you had gone another 11 years in the future where we are now, you would have to add another one that is uh, after H1N1. Okay. So the one that actually stretches for the longest time has been smallpox. Right. If you look at smallpox, smallpox only ended in the early 2000s. Right. Completely ended uh, the total amount of people who died. Is a very impressive uh, number, right? Each each uh, red human being here represents 10 million deaths. Okay, 10 million deaths. Right, the box is not drawn to scale, but yeah, uh, you can take a look at it. So throughout humanity's prob history, right, uh, problem our our uh, problematic past, a couple of these very major events have actually plagued us for a long while. How big will the COVID-19 blimp be at the end of the day? We don't know. Okay, how long will this whole endeavor uh, last? We don't know either. So, if you're watching this and in the future and and uh, it has already ended and you have a clear idea of the impact of it, it may not be that significant, or at the very least, it will be on this timeline because it is at the very least as significant as SARS already here in the early part of 2020. Another key thing that we need to talk about before we look at the diseases itself is uh, this concept of the scale of the, the outbreak, right? We can look at it from uh, two main uh, scales that we are looking at, right? Epidemics and pandemics. So epidemic right, generally refers to sudden large outbreak of disease affecting a population la that is higher than the normal rates. It tends to be within an area, okay, a confined geographical area, uh, doesn't spread out of the the direct uh, area yet. Pandemic, pandemic refers to a widespread epidemic, okay, usually continent wide at least, or global in reach. So remember the in the start of the COVID nineteen. Uh, pandemic, the World Health Organization was very hesitant to label it a pandemic because it was largely still uh, seen to be contained within China itself. Okay, with very little initially, very little uh, spread out of China. Therefore, if you were to carefully look at the definition of a pandemic, right, they were they were perfectly within their rights to say that it is not a pandemic scale thing. Uh, they, there is still a chance that it can be contained, that it will be reduced. Um, because they didn't know how fast the spread would be and how infectious this 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 particular disease would be in the in the long run, so they are not totally wrong in insisting that it was not a pandemic at the beginning. Uh, so 
okay, if you think about the events that actually happened through, what was the trigger that allowed that, that forced the World Health Organization into uh, making the declaration that is now a global pandemic? It was the outbreak in multiple countries overseas, where you started seeing the Italians getting hit, the French getting hit, the Germans getting hit, and eventually the Americans getting hit. There was no way around it. It was global, so it fits into the definition of a pandemic. Okay, so if you move on to page 203 of your textbook onwards, you will start to be introduced into the, uh, the disease called malaria. Okay, malaria is an insect vector disease, means it's transmitted through insects. The insect we're in, in particularly in particular we're looking at is the mosquitoes. Right? Actually, we, we in the tropical areas, we are the expert in mosquito con control, uh, or rather we are the ones who have the most exposure to it. We've been constantly trying to fight this uh, mosquito problem with dengue, uh, similar to mosquito, right? So, um, how does uh, insect vector work? Insect has to bite someone who is infected, okay, absorb some of the the blood, the infected blood, and then bite someone else. Then it gets transferred on to the next person. So that's generally how malaria is transmitted. If you are looking at the extent and spread of malaria globally and in Asia, right, it is uh, generally found in the areas surrounding the tropical areas, uh, dying off as you move away from the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Okay, uh, the sector that is bended between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn is where you find most of the areas that are affected by malaria. Now, having said that, uh, uh, about half of the world's population is actually at risk of contracting malaria. But uh, some areas and some groups are tend to be more vulnerable than others. Okay, children, children tend to have lower immunity. The elderly and the pregnant are also groups that are uh, more often in this uh, sector that will be more prone to malaria. Okay, so it's not a very homogeneous uh, disease. Now, uh, in terms of factors that contribute to the spread of malaria, what you can see in the diagram here, in the pictures in, on the slide here, are examples of lack of sanitation. Okay? So, in, in large areas of Southeast Asia and, and South Asia, and Asia itself, uh, we, have, we do have uh, a lot of less developed countries. So, if you look at their, their toilet conditions, you do have a lot of these um, very, very, very badly created uh, toilets. Now, how does this lack of sanitation or poor sanitation uh, affect affect uh, malaria spread. Now, when you have bad sanitation, right, what you end up with is you end up with uh, stagnant pools of water, right? Stagnant pools of water that is not cleared off. Uh, when the rain comes, if you look at the toilet itself. The rain, the toilet is not covered most of the time. So what happens is those stagnant pools get enhanced by the rainwater, and they can get trapped and uh, encourage mosquito growth. So if you think about it from that perspective, right? The mosquito growth will it only increase the risk of malaria? No, right? All the mosquito-borne vector uh, diseases will also coincidentally uh, also increase. Uh. So you will oh, you also see spikes in dengue and and beyond just malaria itself. However, uh, because you're encouraging the growth of mosquitoes with this bad sanitation uh, and wastewater treatment, you tend to have uh, a problem of malaria mosquitoes. Uh, from an economic standpoint, when you have limited health care, uh, you may not have enough access to health care, you may not have enough doctors, you may not have enough treatment for people living in rural areas. So when you have a critical shortage of doctors, right, the health care needs of the local population uh, end up creating a situation where the malaria victims are often not treated, okay, and also because they, are, they cannot afford the treatment. In terms of the environmental factors, uh, one of them is of course overcrowding uh, in your living conditions. I will look, look at this picture here. Uh, this is a typical slum in India, right? When you're living very, very close to one another, uh, the proximity allows for the mosquito to bite through an uh, entire village within the night, right? Uh, instead of having to fly distances from house to house, uh, you cannot cover the distance, right? Everybody's next to one another. In developed countries, such uh, overcrowding also may occur in certain special situations. Um, we do often think of refugee camps as uh, locations where you do have very crowded situations. Um, another one actually that came to light was during the COVID-19 situation where you have uh, migrant workers and low-wage worker dormitories or housing areas. They may not be government-sanctioned dormitories, okay? They may be slum areas that the migrant workers actually work in. 
Now because these living areas are very very cheap to start with, it is very very likely that uh, as a result of this, the living conditions are very cramped and so when you have any sort of disease outbreak, right, whether it's uh, airborne, insect borne, droplet borne, uh, the spread is very very fast. So environmental factors, living conditions being overcrowded is very very serious one. Uh, another one is when you have slums, if you take a look at this picture here, the slums, there's normally very bad drainage in slums. It can be along the roads, it can be along the drains itself, it can be clogged up with trash, uh, your housing areas, the front yard, or your the roof, the roof rails. You may have uh, very bad drainage and as a result a lot of stagnant water occurring. Um, being the people who are plagued by dengue in Singapore, you should know that uh, with the mozzy wipe out, uh, all you actually need for mosquitoes grow with a, is a pool of water about the size of a 20 cent coin okay very little water so imagine this large uh, pools of water that you see in the picture here it's like a mega many olympic sized pools for the mosquitoes to breed freely okay so when you have uh, poor drainage and stagnant water this is another environmental factor that actually contributes to the spread of malaria very very um prevalent in ldc's now the final um, environmental factor that we can talk about is actually the effect of climate. Um, why is it that we look at the band between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn as uh, the large malaria zones on the globally? Because generally the climate in this area is warm. Okay, We do have your equatorial and tropical equatorial belts uh, where you have heat, sufficient heat and sufficient rainfall. Now these are the two things that encourage uh, mosquitoes and other insects to grow rapidly. So because of the climate conditions that are prevalent in these areas we do uh, tend to have a lot of um, mosquitoes and other insects therefore the, uh, there's a greater spread of malaria within the area so once again please remember we are looking at temperatures in the range of between 22 to 30 degrees okay which is ideal for uh, mosquitoes and where they are most active and you also have a lot of rainfall where you have a lot of stagnant water and uh, when you are looking at humidity of between you know 50 to the high high 60 percent on a regular basis it actually encourages mosquito activity okay so they do tend to have a longer lifespan as well therefore infection is higher so having talked about what malaria is uh, and why we have more malaria cases in certain areas what encourages the spread let's take a look now what, uh, at the impacts of malaria okay so the first one is of course death right if you have been hit by malaria and you do not have access to any sort of medical care or you're late in, in getting medical treatment there's always going to be the risk of you dying so death rate will spike as a result of that especially in ldc's Okay, a subset of the death rate is of course IMR, infant mortality rate, which we learned earlier on in Gateway 1. Now, you must understand that human children uh, are very weak and uh, not able to protect themselves very much. Okay, So, when they are at this very vulnerable stage and if they get hit by a malaria mosquito, uh, they die very easily. Okay, So, IMR is one of the key things that will spike if you have a malaria outbreak, especially in LDCs. We, we must however note uh, that actually um, if the child or if the infant were to be tested for malaria and to be given the correct anti-malaria drugs immediately or in a timely manner, there is a very good chance of the child making full recovery and having no lasting effects on the growth as well as development of the child. However, being in an LDC, uh, access to timely access rather to medical care and affordability is not always going to be there. Now moving on to economic impacts of malaria, uh, the burden of malaria on household is a very real thing that, that families in LDCs have to face. If you look at the economic cost of uh, malaria, right? In, if malaria is coming in your area, you're, you start to have malaria deaths in your area, what are some of the things that you will need to buy to, to ensure the health and safety of your family? Uh, things like insect treated nets, okay, medication for the treatment, uh, traveling to obtain treatment, the expenses. Right, lost income from uh, days where you're not going to work because you're, uh, you're either recovering or you're undergoing treatment. Uh, same thing, loss of school, right? Uh, cost of implementing certain preventive measures, even things like funeral costs. Okay, all these are additional burdens on uh, households and their expenditure. So if you're talking about LDC that's really very, very poor, right? All these are additional costs that they may not be able to shoulder. Healthcare alone, healthcare alone is another very big problem for LDCs. People living in LDCs are very poor. You have to remember that. Okay, they're not like uh, you and I. Okay, even though some of us are on different ends of the middle income scale, 
um, we are still considerably a lot better off than the LDC population we're looking at in, in these samples here. Okay, so our cost of healthcare can be as much as 40% uh, of the total public health spending. Now these funds, uh, as a result of having to divert some of public funds into this area here to deal with a pertinent problem, the government is now once again not able to use the funds to focus on other areas like for education, for defense, for other forms of agriculture to, to and increase the rate of development for the country itself. Uh, the final economic impact of uh, malaria is loss of productivity because when you are down with malaria and even if you are undergoing treatment, uh, malaria is a disease that is uh, commonly triggered or that commonly triggers a fever. So the, you think about the last time you had a fever, right? Some of you feel like you were you're gonna die, okay? And it's very common. Malaria will trigger high fever. A lot of the insect-borne vector diseases tend to trigger high fevers. So if you are in that feverish state, think of it, if I were to put you to work, if I were to put you to um, to school, your productivity level is definitely not going to be as high, right? So loss of productivity is a very key uh, economic impact of malaria. And with that, we've come to the end of part one, part one, which is covering some of the introductory uh, components of KQ2. What are, how, how do we look at the spread of diseases, what is an epidemic, what is a pandemic, um, what are some of the indicators as well as uh, how malaria is spread and what kind of impact malaria brings to countries that are impacted by malaria. Okay, so I will follow up with another video very shortly on part 2 of Gateway 2. Once again, Gateway 2 has been split into two separate videos, so hopefully it becomes a little bit more palatable for you. Right, so uh, we will cover HIV AIDS in the second video. Okay, so that's all. Uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please click subscribe uh, and stay tuned for part 2.